Good morning, Facebook land. This is JP. I just wanted to do a fairly quick video on gaslighting. Um, you know, uh, I am not with my narcissist anymore, but we do have children together. And it's odd, but the healthier I'm getting, the more I can sense that she knows this and it drives her batty. That's my guess. But I really don't like to think about her too much, only from the standpoint of being able to get on here, talk about my examples, I have one today, talk about my examples with her to maybe help some of uh, you that are going through things wonder why or how they're doing these things. So, my, um, my ex-wife, uh, and this isn't a big deal, but this is an example that I want to share that you can apply to a lot of different situations and really take precautions and really frame it for what it is and not take it to heart and be hurt over it. So it's called, uh, it's called gaslighting and gaslighting is a form of abuse. It's a form of mental abuse and it's when the uh, perceptions are messed with of the target. So, sorry, somebody haunted me. I don't know if I should be doing this while I'm driving. Anyways, uh, so it's what it's a form of mental abuse. And uh, I had an example where my wife was uh, wanted to buy some trip insurance for my son. She said, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, text message to me. Well, you know, he's going to Europe and let's get him this uh, uh, insurance. It's extra insurance. It's $160. And I didn't agree to it. I said, well, send me some more information about it. And so I didn't hear back from her. I was expecting to get a link or maybe cut and paste something in the text messages. And then she follows up later and she says, hey, what do you think? Let's, can we do this? You know, you want to pay half or... And I was like, I, I didn't get any information, so send me some information about it, and, and, we'll, and, I'll, and I'll look at it. So she's like, okay, I'll send you, I'll, I'll send you an email. So two days go by, I never get an email from her. And see, this is what's this is what's smart of her, from a narcissist standpoint of trying to stay in your head, is they will they will create something, create a future event, know that you, and this is probably a test too, again, I can't think like her, I'm trying to understand her, but as long as she can stay in my head, that's what they want, that's the goal. They wanna still be a part of your mental uh, map. They still wanna be included, they want you to think about them. So, if there's a future event, she says she's gonna send me an email, that email never came, okay? Two days later, two days go by. Hey, what do you think? Did you get my email? And I, I just simply replied, nope. Before, I would have replied, oh, let me check, let me go look at this. Um, you know, I would have bent over backwards to try and figure out, well, what's the problem? Why didn't I get the email? Because obviously it's my fault. If I didn't get the email, I must have uh, let it go to the junk folder or something. So, I don't hear back from this. A couple days later, my daughter is, uh, my son, my wife is driving my son and my daughter to the airport. And I get a phone call from my daughter. And my daughter says, hey dad, um, I'm calling, uh, mom wants to know if you got that email, or what are you, what, what you gonna do about his insurance? And I said, huh, I, I was a little surprised because and that's the other thing too, is never be surprised what a narc does. I was surprised that she was using my daughter to talk for her. First thing I said was, why why don't you put mom on the phone? Why, why isn't she talking to me? Oh, well, well mom's driving. And uh, of course, you know, when you got the kids on, she's painting me to be out, be some kind of um, ultra sensitive, uh, you know, irrational type of person. So I didn't, I just said, oh, uh, well, yeah, I think I looked at it, um, and I don't want to do it because it's uh, it's just it's bad. It's tri it's trip insurance. It's baggage in in 
insurance. And we, we really don't need that. He's on a guided tour and the chances of that happening and, you know, he doesn't have any really high valuable. So, no, uh, I don't think we're going to do that. I said, besides, I said, I don't think we can do it. I, it. This is the day of the trip. I think we have to purchase it a day ahead. And and my daughter asked my, my wife, my ex-wife, she's like, Mom, um, Dad says that he doesn't know if you can even get it now. And, and then I hear, well, oh, yeah. And then she's like, yeah, 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 you can't get it anymore. So she had my daughter call me about some trip insurance that she never sent me any information on, but pretended to. And again, that's gaslighting. That's making me thinking I'm crazy, right? I don't see this. But it's also her way, and this is what the narcissist does, is they like to test and see where your head's at. They, they want to see where your head, they're, they're, they're constantly like little scientists, little mad scientists experimenting to see what they can get away with, what you'll do, what your boundaries are. It's really what they're doing. Um, and so I think she was trying to take a mental snapshot of me and where I'm at. And I don't think it came back very good for her uh, because I think she wanted to be in my head more and wanted to be bent over backwards for her because she's just a, an extra special person. And it's, it's not working that, that, that way. And it's because of the videos uh, from Dana and being in this group and getting it out and talking about it. Um, I, I tell you, gaslighting, and Dana says this, gaslighting is probably the worst thing that a narcissist does besides any type of physical abuse. Gaslighting is just, it's just awful because it makes you, it makes one doubt their perception. You, 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 you may wonder if you're the crazy one. So, and that's what my ex loves to do. She wants to put, make me the crazy one. So I think she was looking for a reaction for me to blow up on the phone, which I didn't, um, especially with my daughter. So anyways, I just wanted to share that, that example of gaslighting. If any of you have some examples of gaslighting, I will look at this a little bit later, uh, maybe in a, in a few hours and, uh, I'll, I'll, look to uh, add some responses and comments. Um, gaslighting is really serious business, man. It's not, uh, if somebody's gaslighting you, you will, it will drive you crazy uh, over, over an extended period of time. So you need to get, that's a big reason to go no contact. Um, you, need to get, you need to get out of there because pretty soon you're going to internally really start doubting yourself. Um, I know I have. Uh, my confidence, my confidence was really shot. Uh, being with her when she was doing the gaslighting. Um, she wasn't doing it all of, uh, through all of our marriage, at least not that I'm aware of, but it really ramped up uh, the closer she got to discard, right? When she had another person in her life, especially if your narcissist is, is cheating on you, you're being gaslit, okay? You're being told things, you're being lied to, right? I mean, gaslighting is like a, a, an extreme form of lying because uh, it's so covert because it's, it's making you doubt your own perceptions, not somebody telling you to doubt your perceptions. It's, uh, you know, I mean, the easiest way I can describe gaslighting is an example is uh, for, you know, somebody to buy a loaf of bread, put it on the counter, open it, eat it, you know, to make a sandwich. And then two hours later, they go back to get that loaf of bread and the narcissist or the, the abuser has moved it on them. They moved it, uh, put it in the fridge. And then the person says, did you put this bread in the fridge? And no, what, what, what are you losing your mind again? You know, that's so, and, and so then, the, <laughs> then the abuser can abuse them some more. Like, you know, what's wrong with you? Gosh, you, I can't believe you're forgetting. You're so forgetful. That's just like you. Oh my gosh. You know, blah, 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 man. It's just, it's like a double whammy. So the narcissist gets one, gets one over on the target and, uh, gives them some supply and then they get to uh, verbally abuse them as well so anyways uh, yeah so I'm gonna read a couple comments here my to do all the time say let's do this yeah the future gaslight right the the, the the future event that never happens but then when I literally drag information out of him snippet by snippet yeah yeah yep the cheating cheating and gaslighting are like go they go together and I think um, I think the more they gaslight, the more they push the envelope, right? The, the more they see what they can get away with, kind of like cheating. They might come home late one night and see what your reaction is. 
Uh, and if they say, oh, they didn't even notice it or whatever, you may have noticed it, but just you didn't say anything because, gosh, if you say something, you get you get read the riot act for why why are you questioning me or whatever. But anyways, yeah, they see what they can get away with, and then they'll just ramp ramp it up. They'll they'll come home late, a couple days a week, and I mean they're smart like that, right? They uh, they're remember they're a whole different person, so they're they're putting on this persona to make you believe that there's someone that they're not because they know that if you if you saw who they really were, if they were to act how they really felt and what they really wanted to, to, to do, um, you would be, uh, you wouldn't be with them. <laughs> they got to hide that, right? And that's why we can't understand them because we don't operate like that. Um, you know, and, and I mean, gosh, you know, uh, uh, we're all human beings and what, what used to bug me so much was to be told to 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 that I had to be, see I was required to be the most honest person ever right and I was but you know I'm human right I tell little white lies but it's not like it's out of a sense of uh, caring like I'm I'm trying to I I would say some lies to protect people's feelings but nothing major nothing like uh, you know infidelity or something like like that but even the narcissist used to accuse me of like well you lied I got you lie all the time or whatever and and they just they take that one those those few little things that you do those things that are kind of like a norm in, you know in, in society and then they take that and they make it like like you're the liar all the time and that's just how they that's just how their brain operates right they're justifying rationalizing uh, making you the bad guy you know that's just how they work so I'm gonna I parked here let, let me uh, read a couple things that I gotta go so uh, Sir Cheats a lot wasn't working for a couple months and I thought he was going to work he dressed for work and told me about his day at work <laughs> oh my gosh I laugh be, because uh, that I can picture that guy just just uh, oh just what an idiot <sighs> Close to discard, yep. He was telling me black is white. Dismissively saying when I wasn't around for such and such, such event happened when it actually happened. You know, and here's the thing, because if you act on that information, if they're gaslighting you and they're giving you bad information and you act on it, um, you look like a crazy one. Because I remember a few times where she would tell me something about somebody, and then when I would see them, like, hey, I heard, uh, you know, I'm sorry about your... Um, your dad passing or whatever um, they'd be like w what are you talking about and then it would look like I got my facts all screwed up and then finally I put it back like oh you know who's telling me that well it's my it's my wife telling me this and I'm thinking you know see and that's the other thing too is my my uh, my ex made a habit of telling me she made a ha habit of telling me lots of truths okay I know this is gonna sound contradictory to what I'm saying but it's a conscious effort and I remember thinking like why is she putting in such an effort to show me that she cleaned up the garage and she organized things and did things because and, and she would talk about that and, and use that she would do one event and get try to get the most out of it so she would say she cleaned the garage and did this and everything and everything checked out, right? Check, you know, she was honest about it, right? She was honest about um, where she was. Like, she would call me from the grocery store and say, hey, I'm at the grocery store. And you could almost hear the checkout things in the background, like the scan, the beep, beep, you know, and her saying, oh, oh I was just talking to the cashier, hold on. And so I would believe that she was at the grocery store and she would come home with groceries. So what they'll do, though, is they're purposely... And I know this from, from, from experience because I, I kind of called her on it, but they will purposely make a big deal out of those little events. Something as simple as calling you from the grocery store. It couldn't, it, they don't even care what's about that. Oh, oh, did you, uh, did you see that collar I left, uh, by the sink for the dog? Yeah, it's a new collar. It'll fit him. Uh, you know, we lost his old one or whatever, but they'll, they'll give you something that, um, they'll give you some honest things. They'll, they'll tell you honest things. And they're little things, but they make them big because in the, re the relationship, they really don't matter. They're day to day stuff. And then what that do is that gives them that gives them enough um, honesty points, right, for them to go back and 
do all this deceptive, you know, lying behind your back. And they know that they've got enough honesty points. I just made that up. Um, they got enough honesty points in that bank that you're going to buy it, right? So you're not going to question them on it. Um, I think that's why mine never did the silent treatment because she always had to keep, keep, uh, keep the propaganda going, keep the keep the program going, keep the script going. That you know, I'm an honest person. I'd never cheat on you. I'm an honest person. Uh, you know. But but what was interesting is is I remember, and I don't know if you guys have had this experience too, but if you ask a narcissist like a simple question, like, uh, you know, did you put the new dishes away? It's not a simple, uh, you know, for, with my ex, it was not a, a simple thing of uh, yes or no. It was always like a weird, like, pause. Like, it had to be filtered. Like, the question I asked had to be filtered through... <laughs> through I don't know through the gaslighting filter um, she wanted it's like she wanted it's, it's almost like they just can't give you a straight answer they have to see number one I mean I'm just thinking out loud here but number one does it play into my agenda is what she might be thinking and number two how is it gonna you know how is it gonna advance me number three did I actually do it or do I need to tell him I did it um, so there was always this this pause this um, this uh, delay between getting an answer um, from her about you know just a simple thing just something that if she'd asked me I'm processing it I think normally where I'm just thinking did I do it oh yeah yeah I, I did that ask her yeah did you put those uh, new dishes away um, the dishes uh, yes uh, you know and then since she's in conversation with me too if it's something where she didn't do it and she said she was then she can she's not gonna answer it straight she's gonna say well, no, but you told me that blah, blah, blah. She'll put something back on me like, uh, if, in other words, if she didn't create perfection in her mind, um, she's either going to lie to create that perfection. She knows almost if she can't lie, she has to um, answer truthfully. But she's got to do that twist where the hot potato where you ask her a question, no, she didn't do it. Boom, she puts it right back on me. Um, you know, and she she doesn't ask, she asks me a question. She'll put something like, "Well, well, you're you, you know you're asking me this. Why do you need them? Why do you need those dishes put away? You know." And that wasn't a question I asked her. I asked her, you know, why why you know did you put those new dishes away? Just uh, you know, because I knew that our daughter was coming home later, and I wanted the kids to be able to get the dishes, and because we didn't have any, you know. So it's a, a simple question. They will look at a simple question. And that answer, answering that, they will answer it to their advantage, not as a yes or no, but as a, how can I advance this? And then if they want to get defensive about it, they're going to put it back on me. They're, she's going to throw it back on me because I, I know this has happened and say, you know, well, it's your fault. You know, you, you, you did that. So, so yeah, the honesty points that just, uh, that just kind of occurred to me is, uh, that they will, um, that's how, and, and that, see, I think that's a form of gaslighting because, it's a form of deception, at least, where the the narcissist is presenting this image by using those honesty points and milking them for all they're worth. And if they have enough honesty points, then you're going to believe their uh, lies. Um, and they'll do the major lies, right? The sleeping, the cheating, or just you know the the really bad stuff. But um, but anyways, uh, yeah. Um, so I'm at work. I got to run, but uh, I wanted to just. Uh, chat with you guys on that so have a good day guys love you post on the board no contact